The Pro Tools Matrix features an integrated studio monitor section, which in the previous video, we started creating a basic profile, including source inputs, speakers, fold down, and meters for our control room. Now let's add to it by creating additional monitors that we can allocate for QMixes. Before we begin, let's briefly examine the file structure of the monitor profile. Dadman has two separate configuration files, one .dms file that saves the state of the inputs, outputs, patch bay, and the configuration settings such as sample rate and synchronization. A second dmprof file is used specifically to save the monitor profile. It can be beneficial to have Dadman automatically load your last saved monitor profile when the application launches, which can easily be enabled in the preferences. Let's take a look at a basic stereo music session, which will allow us to create QMixes that we can further manage downstream of Pro Tools with the matrix. I've opened a session which started from my mix template containing Q sends on all of the individual tracks which feed each of the three stereo Q mixes. You can see I have output sends A, B, and C assigned to tracks starting on send F, the second bank in the mix window for organizational purposes. And since the sends are pre-fader, I don't have to worry about accidentally interrupting the audio flow if I choose to destructively solo a channel. I can easily determine the blend of the elements individually for each of the three cues. I've also added stereo master faders to each of the cues, which allows me a final gain stage with protective limiting, which is applied before the mix hits the talent's headphones. The monitoring hardware that we are using consists of two different headphone amplifier interfaces, both of which offer multi-channel Dante inputs. The Clang Quell is an exceptional fidelity monitor interface with extremely low latency, featuring four stereo pairs of inputs and powered by the same Brooklyn 2 chip used in the Matrix IP audio option. We've also connected a pair of Focusrite AM2 interfaces, which are portable stereo headphone amps, which include line level outputs that can be used to feed near field monitors. Let's take a quick look at the IO setup to see how the Q mixes are being sent out of Pro Tools and into the matrix. If we take a look at the output tab, you can see we have three stereo output paths to find, starting at channel 23 for QA, B, and C. Let's jump back to Dadman and start defining our Q mix inputs and outputs within the monitor profile. First, Right click in the monitor profile window and choose Add Monitor. Let's call this one QA. Single click to rename the field labeled Monitor. This time we're going to designate the monitor mode as Q and set the Yukon mode to Monitor A, which will show up on the top left encoder of the S6 interface. For this first Q, we're going to use one of our two Focusrite AM2 interfaces as the destination. Click on Outputs and choose Add New Set. Let's call this AM2A since we have two units. Now let's assign the output channels to Dante. We're going to use channels 9 and 10 of our Dante IP option, and let's also label them appropriately. Next, let's connect the custom submix paths we created in Pro Tools as source inputs to feed into this queue. If you remember, our queues are using outputs 23 through 28 from Pro Tools, which feeds the input of the matrix via Digilink. Let's create three new sources that correspond to Pro Tools queue A, B, and C. While we're here, let's add in the sources that we defined previously for the control room. So if we need to send the main Pro Tools mix or perhaps iTunes or any other Mac sources to the talent, we can. Click on Sources and choose Add Existing Source. First Pro Tools HDX, then Mac. If I wanted to, I could even create a distinct fold down for this monitor. We haven't yet discussed talkback, that is communicating with the talent that you're sending a mix to. The first thing we need to do is to find the talkback input to the matrix. At the top of the monitor profile window, click on Talkback, then click Add Channel to define the source input. This could be a microphone AD card, a line level input using an external preamp, or even a Dante based microphone. I'm going to choose AD Channel 1 since I do have the AD cards with mic preamps installed in my matrix. Now for our QA, right click on Outputs, then Set Talkback Mode to define the behavior of talkback injection into the Q feed. You can attenuate, cut, or simply dim without injecting talkback when the switch is pressed. Let's add three more Q monitors in the same manner. First, routing to the second Focusrite AM2 interface via Dante on channels 11 and 12. Finally, we'll add in the last two cues, which will be assigned to our Clang Quell interface. We now need to look at Dante Controller and make all the necessary network patches to connect the output of the matrix to the input of the Dante based headphone amplifiers. First, QA using the Focusrite AM2 A. Matrix is the transmitter on channels 9 and 10, which will be sent to the first AM2 which as you can see will be stationed in the studio's control room. Channels 11 and 12 go to the second AM2, which is in the studio. Finally, channels 13 through 16 of the matrix get patched to the Clang Quell, which also resides in the studio, with four stereo pairs available. 
You can see I've already taken advantage of the ability to explicitly label all of the channels for our Dante devices in the device view of Dante Controller. In the previous video, we looked at setting the monitor mode as either Q or Master. Let's take advantage of this now. If we go back into the control room monitor, we can add in existing sources for the cues that we just created. This gives us the ability to listen to and QC the monitor mixes that we're sending to talent from the comfort of the control room. The Pro Tools matrix includes a powerful studio monitor section, which allows the creation of customized cues built from any of the analog or digital inputs feeding into the interface, offering unparalleled routing flexibility. In the upcoming videos, we'll take a look at using Yukon control surfaces to get our hands on the monitor profile, both with S6 and on Pro Tools control.